and of the Holy Spirit. to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Oh God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten to the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the priests of Judea, the priests and the people, added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messengers to them, for he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets, until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all its palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. Until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbaths, during all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest while seventy years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, King of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth the Lord, the God of heaven, has given to me, and he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judea. Whoever therefore among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up, and may God be with him. The word of the Lord. <laughs> Responsorial song, let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. By the streams of Babylon we sat and wept, 
when we remembered Zion. On the aspens of that land, we hung our harps. Let my tongue be silent if I ever forget you. For there our captors asked us the lyrics of our songs, and our despoilers urged us to be joyous. Sing for us the songs of Zion. Let my tongue be silent if I ever forget you. How could we sing a song of the Lord in a foreign land? If I forgot you, Jerusalem, may my right hand be forgotten. Let my tongue be silent if I ever forget you. May my tongue cleave to my palate if I remember you not. If I place not Jerusalem ahead of my joy, let my tongue be silent if I ever forget you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God who is rich in mercy because of the great love he has for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kingdom to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from you. It is a gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance, and we should live in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the servant in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through Him. Whoever believes in Him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict 
that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. In our second reading, we heard how beautifully St. Paul had written about the mercy of God. Remember, before his conversion, St. Paul was a leading persecutor of Christians and was on his way to Damascus to arrest more Christians when Jesus appeared to him. That experience of divine mercy changed the heart of St. Paul forever. Thus, St. Paul was telling us from his personal experience of God's mercy when he wrote, God who is rich in mercy because of his great love for us, even when we, when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. St. Paul was not the only person to receive mercy from Jesus. There are lots of examples in the Gospels. Let me give you three of them. First, the Samaritan woman at the well. It was midday. Disciples went into town to buy food. So Jesus was alone at the well. Jesus being God, knew who was about to come to the well. He wanted time alone to speak with a woman who always came to the well by herself. She came to the well alone because the woman at town would not permit her to come with them. Because of her sin, the women of town wanted nothing to do with her. During his conversation with her, Jesus told her about the told her that she has had five husbands. The man she was living with now was not her husband. He did not yell at her. Instead, he continued speaking with her in order to pierce her deeply wounded heart with love. She has had five marriages, was currently living with a man outside of marriage, and none of the women of the town wanted to speak with her. Does that sound like a person who has been wounded? Does that sound like a person who's had her heart broken many times? Does that sound like a woman who was broken and is in need of healing? Jesus knows that. He knows that yelling at her won't help. She's had plenty of men do that to her. The only thing that will heal her brokenness is an encounter with the love and mercy of God. And that's what Jesus gives her. He gives her a personal invitation to repent and receive the love and mercy of God. And then start over again. Jesus offers mercy to whoever is willing to receive it. When faced with man's misery, mercy knows no limitation. Amen. Probably the most famous account that Jesus has for the sinner 
is the woman caught in adultery. She was dragged before Jesus by a mob holding stones. And they asked his permission to throw stones at her until she was dead. What did Jesus tell them all? He said, Let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. The mob dropped their stones and went away. After they went away, Jesus asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? The woman, the woman responded, No one, sir. Jesus told her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and do not sin again. Like the woman at the well, the woman caught in adultery is a broken human being. She's been used and abused. And probably allows herself to be used and abused because she thinks she deserves it. She probably has no self-esteem and thinks she's beyond being loved by anyone, including God. How could God possibly love her? Yes, she is wounded deeply. Jesus knows that. He has come to rescue her. She probably believes she deserves to die, but Jesus doesn't think so. He thinks she deserves to live. He thinks she deserves a chance to start over again. And that is what Jesus does. He gives her the gift of divine love and mercy. He tells her not to sin again and sets her free to start her life all over again. Our Lord gave her the perfect gift, a new life, a new chance, and account the love and mercy of God. Jesus offers mercy to whoever is willing to receive it. When faced with our misery, Mercy, capital M, knows no limitation. Amen. Amen. On the day Jesus rose from the dead, he appeared to the apostles in the upper room. All of them, except John, had abandoned him. Peter, the leader of the apostles, was brave enough to follow Jesus after he was arrested. However, when asked if he was a follower of Jesus, Peter denied it, not once, not twice, but three times. Peter wept bitterly. Peter was broken. Peter was wounded. And so were the other apostles. They were lost and confused. They truly were sheep without their shepherd. They were scattered, and they fled when Jesus was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. They were all broken and wounded. So what was the first thing Jesus said to them when he rose from the dead? Did he berate them for abandoning him? Did he fire them and go out and search for a new group of apostles to start over with? No, he did none of that. The first thing Jesus said was, Peace be with you. In essence, Jesus is telling them that he isn't mad at them. He is telling them that they can still do the work of God. He is giving them an account of the love and mercy of God. Our Lord offers mercy to whoever is willing to receive it. When faced with our misery, mercy knows no limitation. Amen. Amen. 
Jesus reveals to us what God is like. God is love and mercy. On one occasion, the Pharisees complain that Jesus welcomes sinners and eats with them. In response to that complaint, our Lord told the three famous parables of God's mercy and love. The parables of the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the prodigal son. The best antidote against the thought that God can't love me or forgive me is a crucifix. Anytime we doubt the love and mercy of God, look at a crucifix and see proof of God's love and mercy for us. In fact, in the midst of the tremendous pain and suffering he was going through, our Lord says to the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus offers mercy to whoever is willing to receive it. When we're faced with our misery, mercy knows no limitation. Amen. While our Lord walked this earth, he offered every sinner he encountered a personal invitation to repent and receive the mercy of God. That personal invitation is offered to all of us. When faced with our brokenness and our sin, Jesus will not run away. He goes and search for the lost sheep, including us. Yes, the creator of the universe, God Almighty, the one who can change water to wine, the one who can walk on water, personally invites us to repent and receive his love and mercy. Does God really care that much about us? He does. We have heard in our gospel one of the most famous verses in all of the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. Jesus welcomes sinners and eats with them. He talks about mercy, then he offers it to all of us who are willing to receive it. When faced with our brokenness and our sin, God's love and mercy knows no limit. Amen. The scrutinies, which are solemnly celebrated on the third, fourth, and fifth Sundays of Lent, are rites for self-searching and repentance rooted in the ancient baptismal tradition of the Church. The scrutinies are meant to uncover, then heal, all that is weak, defective, or sinful in the hearts of the elect, to bring out, then strengthen, all that is upright, strong, and good. For the scrutinies are celebrated in order to deliver the elect from the power of sin and Satan, to protect them against temptation, and to give them strength in Christ, so as to complete the conversion of the elect, and deepen their resolve to hold fast to Christ, and to carry out their decision to love God above all. Today we celebrate the second scrutiny. Will the elect please come forward? Watch it. 
do it right here. It's supposed to do it right here. And go ahead and kneel down. So my friends, please be silent. This is two young men prepared for baptism at the Easter Vigil. And for you, Lula, I should be very silent for yourselves. That you will go deeper with your race with God and turn away from sin. Let's pray first for these elect whom God has called to remain faithful to Him and boldly give witness to the words of eternal life. That they may ponder the word of God in their hearts and savor its, savor its meaning more fully each day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That they may be freed from the spirit of mistrust that deters people from following Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That while awaiting the gift of God, they may long with all their hearts for the living water that brings eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That by accepting the Son of God as their teacher, they may become true worshipers of the Father in spirit and truth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That they may share with their friends and neighbors the wonder of their own meeting with Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those whose lives are empty for one of the word of, Lord, of God may come to know the gospel of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of us may learn from Christ to do the Father's will and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick of our parish, for those whose names are listed in the book of petitions, especially James Frost, and for all those around the world who have contracted the coronavirus, that they may be healed in body and spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the deceased, especially Tomas Prieto, Virginia Becker, Clayton Reed III, Barbara Gould, Rosie O'Driscoll, Patricia Thurman, Jake Thurman, for those whose names are listed in our book of petitions, and for those who have died as a result of the coronavirus, that they may be with their Savior and ours in paradise, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, source of unfailing light, by the death and resurrection of Christ, you have cast out the darkness of hatred and lies, and poured forth the light of truth and love upon the human family. Hear our prayers for these elect, whom you have called to be your adopted children, enabled in the past from darkness to light, and delivered from the pits of darkness, who have always a children of the light. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'll pray over each of them. Lord Jesus, at your own baptism, the heavens were open, and you received the Holy Spirit and power to proclaim the good news to the poor and restore sight to the blind. Pour out the same Holy Spirit on these elect who long for your sacraments. Guide them along the paths of right faith, safe from error, doubt, and unbelief, so that the eyes unseal they may come to see you face to face. Fear of Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Stand up and go back to your seats.
those to be dismissed for our saying, please come forward. Our Mass is offered for the deceased Robert Foster. Thrones of the minutes of all the host and powers of heaven. 
We see the heavenly glory as well, and we hear claim. the dewfall, so that we become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the death of the Lord until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks and help us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ, we began to one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and we're the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, Assistant Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to a light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may never to be co-heirs of eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
At the Savior's command and the form of divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we have the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grace you grant for peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. As a reminder, of my life here in the Sanders community, the tongue only standing or kneeling. On my right, to my left community, the hand only standing or kneeling.
Let us pray. Oh God, we enlighten everyone who comes into this world. Illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace. We always ponder worthy and pleasing to your men. back with you. I'm too blessed to be stressed. <clears throat> Repeat after me. I'm too blessed to be stressed. <clears throat> Excuse me. Suddenly got a cough. I want to share with you a suggestion for your spiritual reading these days. And I want to tell you how impressed I am with the lay people of our parishes. All the programs you run, all the ministries here at Mass, all the catechists and teachers, all the faith sharing and Bible study, and on and on. Some are even certified spiritual directors, theologians, and we need you. You are the way to renew our church. May you be empowered more and more and to help us along the way. This book titled Spirit Sparks is a passage for every day, a prayer meditation for every day, Monday through Friday throughout the year. And so hopefully it will help you to deepen in the faith and in that way, let the Lord help you serve you to be a missionary to others, to bring them to our church. This book costs $20, half of which you give will go to the parish debt deduction. And I don't make any money on my books, but I'm just glad to share God's word. So I'll be in the back after church too. Hope you come by. I hope you buy five of these and give some to your children, grandchildren, and guests at your place, and uh, people you know, neighbors, anyone who needs to be fired up in the faith, anyone who isn't excited about the faith. We need. Yes. When I go to the doctor, I give one and say, would you like something for your spiritual life? I want to invite you and welcome you to our church. We're called to be missionaries, to make disciples. That's our role. So I hope you stop by and take a look at this after Mass. Thank you. Please stay. First, St. Michael. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke you, we humbly pray.